There are lots of places to be visited. When you come to visit El Minya Governorate and you decide to pass the Nile and visit El Amarna. One of them is called Aken Atun Palace and the other one is called Nefertiti's Palace. The Southern Palace is the one that belongs to King Aken Atun. It was built of mud bricks and some architectural elements were built of a stone. The palace actually was ruined, but the site is magnificent and you ought to visit it when you come to visit El Amarna. At the beginning of the reign of King Amun Hotep III of Egypt, and exactly before the second year of his reign, the king married one of the greatest women in the Egyptian history. For her power in and out of the country was one of the major factors that influenced the destiny of the empire during that period. She was Queen T. was not a descendant of royal blood, but both her parents, Yuya and Tuya, occupied high positions in the country. For her father, Yuya, the priest of Gadmin, and her mother, Tuya, was a supervisor of clothes in the royal palace and a maid in the palace. Being a royal maid and a singer, chanting for God Amun, she was connected to Amun Hotep III during his infancy. Thus, love and intimacy grew between her daughter and the prince, who married her eventually. That marriage was a rebel against the pharaonic traditions, which had an obligation of marriage of the king to the princess, who carries the royal blood in her veins, so that her son would be guaranteed 100% to be a son of a royal queen. King Amun Hotep III ignored and defied that tradition by holding a great marriage festival and commemorating that event on scarabs, which shows his strong personal will right at the beginning of his reign. The translation on these scarabs reads, Long live King Amun Hotep III, given life, and his alive great royal wife T. Her father's name is Yuya and her mom is Tuya, and she's a wife of a great king whose south borders reach Karai, and his northern borders reach Naharin. The funerary furniture that were found in the tombs of Yuya and Tuya are perfect examples of the luxuriousness of the artifacts that must have been made for the king and his successor Akhenaton and his wife Nefertiti. of the palace of King Amun Hotep III attached to his funerary temple called Habo in the west bank of Luxor show how great it was and decorated with natural scenes executed with the finest art of its time. Decided, he ordered the lake to be made in a place called Zer or the place of heaven, where he had picnics with his wife T in a golden boat called Tehen Aton, or the sun disk rises. The history of digging the lake was inscribed on a scarab, stating that this great lake, which length was over a mile and breadth half a mile, was dug in just 15 days.
El Lamati Mosque is one of the most important Islamic monuments in Almenia city in Almenia governorate. It was built during the Fatimid Islamic period, but it got its name from the Ayyubian period. It was Nedm al-Din al-Lamati who gave his name to this mosque. It was renovated during the Ottoman period. It's located by the Cornish Street in Almenia, next to El Fuli Mosque. So when you come to visit Almenia, make sure that you pass by its most important Islamic monuments. The Fatimids Khalifat is an Islamic Shiite Khalifat of the 10th to the 12th centuries. They are from Arab origin and spanned a large area of North Africa from the Red Sea in the east to the Atlantic Ocean in the west. They ruled territories across the Mediterranean coast of Africa and ultimately made Egypt the center of the rule. They claimed their descent from Fatima, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. In 921 AD, the Fatimids established the Tunisian city of Mahdiya as their new capital. In 969, they conquered Egypt and four years later, they established Al Qahira or Cairo to be the capital of their caliphate. Egypt became the political, cultural and religious center of their empire. That was during the ruling of Al Mu'azz al Din Allah, whose troops led by Jawhar al Qaid invaded Egypt, fighting and winning the ruling family then called the Ikhshidis. There were 14 Fatimid Caliphate ruling Egypt. Each of them constructed mosques and palaces and buildings in extravagance, showing their multiple power and luxuriousness. The most famous of which is Al Azhar Mosque and School. It got its name after Fatima al Zahra, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. The Fatimids printed their own style of art in their buildings, for one of their arts is using the carved and engraved stones in abundance, especially at the facade of the mosques, sometimes with decorative plant features, like the open bud flower at the gate of Al Akmar Mosque. Kufian handwriting also spread at their time, which letters ends in leaves. Walking down El Mu'azz al Din al -La Long Street in Islamic Old Cairo would illustrate the magnificent Fatimid constructions and bring remarkable fascination to the beholder. Egyptians believed that life is nothing but a continuous circle of birth, childhood, youth, aging, death and rebirth, and to achieve it, certain elements had to be well preserved, including the body, which needed to be mummified and placed in a good coffin that carries the feature of the deceased, to make it easy for the soul to recognize it when the time comes for it to dwell in its owner. The coffin depended on the wealth and social class of the deceased. For example, the anthropoid coffin of Padi Amun, the high priest of Amun, is composed of a body and its lid. The interior and exterior are covered with religious scenes of deities and sacred texts and signs and the deceased himself praising the gods. God Anubis is a jackal-headed god who sits at the gates of the tombs and guards the cemetery. His black color symbolizes death. He also watches over the process of mummification and thus he is called the Lord and Protector of the Necropolis. Mm -hmm. 
goddess Naftis is a lady of the house, and her crown states her name, Nethat. She warns the deceased with her sister Isis and protects him with her long wings. Before the body is buried, it had to be taken on a boat to make a pilgrimage to Abydos Temple, where God Osiris, the god of the dead, resides. Two women of the family reincarnate goddesses Isis and Naphtis and mourn him. All these rituals combined are basics of the creed of immortality, by which the ancient Egyptian conquered his fear of death, knowing that it doesn't terminate life. Beyond the capital of Egypt, during the reign of the famous king Aachen Aton, which is called Aachet Aton, lies two sets or groups of tombs. They are rock tombs cut in the rocks of the area here, the northern tombs and the southern tombs. As for the northern tombs, they were cut out 280 feet above the level of the ground. They belong to the high official and the nobleman who worked for King Aachen Aton. They belong to people like Pa Nahsi, Mary Ra I, Mary Ra II, Amazis, and Huya. One of the greatest pharaohs who created a massive controversial series about religion in ancient Egypt is King Akhenaton. As soon as he declared his animosity towards the cult of Amon, the principal god of Egypt, he found it inevitable to abandon Thebes, the main seat of Amon's religion, and to build himself a new sacred city to set strong foundations for his new creed without any obstacles or traces of old creeds. He chose a fresh area in Middle Egypt where hills are miles away from the shores of the Nile. He marked the boundaries of this sacred area with 14 stele carved in the rocks, bounding himself with his great oath, swearing never to cross his borders. His oath says, My oath is the truth, and what I like to say, and I will never like to say it, is void for eternity. The southern stele that lies on the eastern mountain of Achit Aton, the one I stand in front, I will never cross it to the south forever, and may the southwest stele be right across it exactly on the western mountain of Achit Aton. That's how Achenaton made for each stele in the east another one matching it in the west side. The new city comprised all sorts of constructions needed to build a royal city. It had palaces for him and for his queen Nefertiti, with a lake to enjoy sailing in it privately, and more than one temple dedicated for the cult of Aton. There were houses for the people and storages, and workshops for the artists, including the workshop of Tutmosis in which the famous head of Queen Nefertiti was found.
The tomb number nine in the collection of the great southern tombs of Amarna is the tomb of Maho, who was the sheriff or the chief of the police in Aton city or Akhid Aton. Being aware of the danger of the theft of his tomb after death and seeing how the ancestors' tombs were robbed, he had used his police talents to choose that secretive location for his tomb and safety for the place of his eternal rest. Indeed, he succeeded in keeping his small tomb safe not only during the political changes that happened so soon, but he has also survived the violation of the current sieves. The design of the tomb follows the style of the intersecting corridors, for its first hall intersects the axis of the tomb, then the inner chapel is elongated with a bit of deviation. The work in the tomb was never finished, as well as the carving in the niche behind. A staircase descends from that chamber. Its 47 steps lead to the burial chamber. At the inner wall of the entrance, there are reliefs representing the king and the queen and Princess Merit Aton in the presence of God Aton. Nefertiti and her daughter shake the rattle to the sun disk, while Maho kneels at the bottom. On the other wall to the right of the entrance, Maho kneels praying. On both the front and the rear walls, Maho receives rewards from Achen Aton for his loyalty in his service. Once in front of the palace, and in another scenes in front of the temple of Aton. The symbolic aim was to show that Maho, being the chief police, was responsible for the safety of the crown and the temple. The scenes that were drawn with black ink were being checked by the chief artist before getting relieved. This means that the scenes in black were left unfinished. On the upper part of the wall in the chief of the police tomb, Maho is seen heading a police troop bigger than the one represented in another scene. The division is lined up in six lines, each with five officers. The accompanying text says, The police of the city of Akhet Aton chant and cheer with these words, As long as Aton rises, he shall remain forever. The southern rear wall of the hall comprises a very important and a unique scene that doesn't exist in all of Amarna. Obviously, it was painted specially for the chief police. At first, the king and the queen are seen riding with their daughter Merit Aton in the same chariot leaving the temple. It's noticeable how the queen is keen on talking to the king or maybe kissing him while his hat is not directed towards the driving directions. The princess takes advantage of that and pricks the active horses with a stick. This marvelous scene proves how far the artist was free in his representations and how accurate his observations were and his veracity in recording. The royal procession of King Achen Aton and Queen Nefertiti in Maho's tomb was going for an inspection mission to the defense centers represented in a small fortress. Maho is seen with his 15 officers running in front of the chariot. What's amazing is that the minister and the officer with inferior rank had to keep up with the royal horses, which they did with an apparent difficulty now that they weren't young and fit anymore. <laughs>